Ciao, ciao, ciao. What's up? Glad to have you all back. Uh, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for weekly automotive mechanical content for the average shade tree mechanic. So for those that do not know, I know I say it at the end of every video, ciao. It's uh, pretty much hello and goodbye in Italian. Found out that I'm 4% Italian. Uh, not that, that matters to any one of y'all. Um, so I figured I'd get back to my roots. Actually not, just kidding. I actually lived there for three years. Uh, so so today, uh, it ended up being a nice day out. I cannot complain. It's like 65, maybe even 70 degrees right now. You know what? It's like probably 60, 65 because I'm wearing my trusty field jacket. Love this thing. Uh, keep me warm through all the coldest nights that I've had outside. So I uh, figured I'll do something that I've had for two weeks and that is install new rear speakers uh, and so I'm not going to do the front passenger front driver door speakers I'm just going to do the rear because I know the fronts are a little bit different and I haven't researched it enough to really be smart and intelligent about installing those so I'm going to do those next uh, but for now I'm actually just going to replace the rear speakers I already did the rear passenger side and so I'll go ahead and show you how to do the rear driver side so it's pretty easy uh, but before we get into the install let me go ahead and let you know why I'm choosing the specific speakers and then essentially why I'm upgrading in the first place all right so for those who do not know I recently upgraded the dash speakers that are in the very front of the truck very significant upgrade compared to the stock factory dash speakers the factory ones were garbage. I won't get too much into it, uh, but I'll go ahead and post the link in the top right. Go ahead and check that video out, how to actually upgrade your dash speakers and your Ram 1500, 2500, 3500 cabin chassis. Every make and model, as long as it's 4th gen, they all do the same thing. Uh, you'll have an additional center dash speaker if you had the Alpine system. The, so an, an upgraded audio system that came with some trucks. Uh, but for tradesmen's, uh, we're only getting two, one on each side of the window. After experiencing how good those speakers were compared to factory, I started looking into the rears and the fronts. So the fronts require just a little more TLC, uh, but the rears are pretty much plug and play. Now, I already did the rear uh, passenger side, and it wasn't as much plug and play due to the fact that uh, RAM kind of makes it a little difficult to to uh, upgrade your, your speakers, uh, but very minimal fabrication. And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm actually making a video so it's just easier on y'all to actually go through the process and do the exact same thing that I'm doing, the exact same steps. And so it doesn't matter which speakers you really go for, as long as they're six by nines, you'll be able to fabricate and install them yourself. And I'll get into the tools that I'm using in a little bit later. Uh, but essentially the reason why I'm upgrading is because uh, after seeing the significant difference from the dash speakers, um, I, I really want to experience that in the rear. Now, I think the fronts uh, do a little mid and trouble, and then the rears do a little more bass, if I can remember correctly. Um, but anyways, uh, any other speaker is better than factory speaker. It's kind of like my thought process on shocks. Any shock is an upgrade compared to factory shocks. They're just meant there to actually get you past the warranty, even though the audio system's not warrantied, uh, but say shocks. And so that's the big reason why I'm actually upgrading these speakers. Now, let me show you which speakers I actually chose. All right, guys, so here we are. Here are the new speakers. Uh, again, I already replaced one, so here's the factory one, and this is a reason why I wanted to do uh, one first, is that so I can actually show you side by side of the factory plastic just looks like junk it's nothing it gets the job done you can listen to music with these um, but they are capable of so much more Mexico so uh, yeah so let me show you which which speakers I went with infinity reference ref 9623ix you cannot go go wrong with these after throwing in infinities in the in dash speakers I wanted to keep some uh, consistency and uh, due to the amount of great reviews on these speakers uh, I wanted to take a shot at them and give them a try and so they're very realistic a uh, very reasonable reasonably priced um, and so they're competitive with a lot of other options out there but after knowing the uh, after having a good experience with the dash speakers uh, I wanted to keep and uh, stick with some infinities. So it says six by nine high performance three way car speaker. Oh, Palier Automobile Trois Voix Haute. 
So essentially that's just in French, but uh, yeah, it pretty much says six by nines. Let's get into some other information. So peak power handling, 300 watt, continuous power handling, 100 watt, nominal impedance, three ohms, and sensitivity, 94 decibels, so that's pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. For the price, I can't complain. Uh, for the quality, I can't complain. So if you're having a hard time trying to pick out which 6x9s to go for, try out these Infinities. I'll go ahead and post the link in the description. Um, you will not be disappointed. So let's get into the side-by-side. -side. So you won't be able to use this or this bottom portion. I think that's just a bracket. Now, if you want to fabricate it to, to use these, uh, that's fine. But if you're using factory screws and whatnot like I did on the the one that I uh, replaced it already with, you could actually just use these longer screws uh, which push the speaker a little out from the door bracket. All right, and so you can use those. So if you don't want to use those, you want to use what's what's uh, the screws that are already on there, uh, do exactly what I'm doing. All right, so as you can see the difference, oh, look at that. All right, that can show there. Um, so flimsy, I mean, probably took maybe two dollars to make in Mexico or a dollar in China but uh, as you can see much better quality I can't uh, it's hard to explain anyways great quality so let's go ahead and get this installed in the truck alright guys so let's go through with what materials you're going to need I highly highly recommend you pick up some of these Metro 72 65 14 model alright and what these are is plug-and-play pigtails for you to actually just plug into the speaker and then plug into your factory harness. Very simple, highly recommended. Just makes your life a whole lot easier. Next thing you need, scissors. I'm using some electrical tape. I'm using my drill, um, but essentially you're gonna need a five millimeter socket to actually remove the stock speaker. Um, this is a T20. This is to remove these uh, small fasteners. All right, screwdriver and a three thirty seconds uh, drill bit. All right, also the um, speakers came with some plastic foam all right, to help uh, fight the vibration based off of once you install the speaker, it'll be metal on plastic. It will cause some vibration unless you use uh, the foam or what I'm using is actually some leftover soundproofing. I'll go ahead and post the link in the description below. Um, but this is good if you just wanna soundproof your doors as well. I just have some leftover, but you can use the foam. Uh, obviously I'm using the drill and then I'm using a small pick. Okay, so essentially that's all it is. I have the speaker right here. So in no way do you have to do it exactly like the way I'm doing it. This is just the way that worked for me to fabricate and get these speakers in the way I want. And so this is just the way I did it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and use the T20. You're actually going to remove one, two, three, four, five fasteners. All right. And then you're actually going to um, unclip this small portion right here. All right, unclip that and you're gonna find a screw. You're gonna have to loosen that screw in order to remove this portion of the door. All right, so let me go ahead and do that real quick and come right back. All right guys, so I went ahead and removed this portion. Like I said, there's a screw that's in there. You need to remove that. And just for your education, here's just what the fastener looks like. This is actually in, secures into the door and it's just a small plastic screw that you remove. Here's that T20. All right, so that's all you gotta do. Put that off to the side. Next step is actually taking off this door panel. Um, but, bef but before you do that, you're gonna have to remove this portion on the top left. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but just this portion right here, it's just held in by three clips. Go ahead and pull in from this bottom, bottom portion, pull straight out, and you're good to go. All right, so let's take off this door panel next. All you gotta do is really just uh, push up and then pull out, but before you do that very violently uh, Just remember you're gonna have to unplug a connection. This is a tradesman edition It only has one connection just for the power window um, But if you have maybe uh, Laramie or limited you might have two two connections based off of um, You may have two. you know, you just may have more goodies than the tradesman as uh, With the rear doors if you don't then there you go. It's just one connection, but if you do uh, It's just something to be aware of all right, so just one up connection you're just gonna press on it pull it out there you go 
Let's go ahead and put this off to the side for now. All right, so here's the speaker, but I don't want to get into that just yet. I want to make sure that there's no really movement within this door panel. All right, because this will cause vibration. I do know that I put soundproofing along the door earlier in its life. Uh, I know that's good, but uh, pretty much, as you can see, here's all these tabs that the door panel actually connects on. Once you push it in and it slides in, uh, these are these connectors. Some have like some velvet material to help with probably some vibrations and, and things like that, as you can see right here. Uh, but for those that don't, this is why I'm using electrical tape. So I'm just cutting out a piece, putting it around, making sure that wherever the door panel actually mates to the door, electrical tape will help with the vibrations. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to one, two, three, four, five, six, six portions. And then I'm actually gonna do the same to the door panel so that, uh, yeah, it's just less vibration when listening to music. One thing you wanna do, just an extra step, you don't have to do this, uh, but for my sake, due to the fact that I'm probably not gonna take off the door panel anytime soon, I just wanna get it right the first time. But if you're not really nitpicky like me, um, just go ahead and bypass this step. But All right, so I finished throwing on some electrical tape all at the connections of where the door panel actually mates to the actual door. And essentially, I did the same thing to these tabs right here. Just put some electrical tape. Um, also, if you can see that, I, I threw a strip of uh, noise uh, canceling or soundproofing just right here because it actually hugs right on top of this portion right there. All right, so next step, uh, actually just going to be taking off this speaker right here. So let's going to go. So what we've got to do is actually go on our adapter. And again, this is a five millimeter socket, and there's four of them. All right, so just go ahead and remove it. All right, so there's the four screws. All right, and remove this connection down here. Press down. There it is gonna save that for a rainy day who knows all right so this is what I'm talking about this pigtail right here uh, so it's actually easier just to do it while it's off the door but there's a bigger one and a small small one it's dummy proof and uh, just uh, plug it in one of them snaps one of them just goes in all the way before we actually mount this as you can see there's metal and then this is just uh, some plastic all right so in order to decrease the amount of vibration so essentially you can use that piece of uh, the foam that it actually came with right here you just cut some throw it around all the edge uh, either on here or on the speaker I prefer the speaker uh, but what I'm doing is just gonna probably just those four small strips uh, one on each side left right top bottom on the speaker before actually getting it up on here so let me go ahead and do that and come right back. All right, so this is what I was talking about. I threw on some soundproofing right here, top or top, bottom, and then on the sides. Uh, so I think it'll work a little better than the foam, but the foam will work. Uh, go ahead and plug this in. Boom, just like that. Throw it in, make sure the wires are good. All right, then I'm just gonna put one screw in just to hold it in place, because we gotta test it. All right, so let's go ahead and test it and make sure it works, uh, and then we'll go ahead and secure it. Call J, J. Think I need a I need a Don't be Damn, that's a whole lot better. All right, so the camera angle is gonna be a little tough. I will go ahead and show you what I'm actually thinking up close and personal, and as close as I really can. All right, so we're gonna use the top right, the bottom right. Actually use the same holes. All right, actually push that to towards the left. Now. These little screws, as you can see, it's got some overhang in them, all right? And you want that overhang to actually secure on top of the metal portion of the speaker, all right? This portion, it's the very corner. You don't want to actually tighten it up along the rubber because that will uh, end up tearing over a while, and now you're just going to get some raspy bass. Right? So you're going to want this overhang on top of the speaker, the metal speaker. Now, the reason why I talked about a drill bit is so that we can make two new holes. Now the stock factory speaker 
poles do not work for this specific speaker, but we're gonna get around that. So like I said, RAM makes it a little bit difficult to upgrade your speakers. Um, they're very cheap. Like I said, I think this was a 330 second drill. Drill bit, all right, and just kind of get in there. One, two. Screw number one. Make sure that's pushed in and to the left. Now let's do the last screw. Shit. You soundproofing or your phone is compressed. These bolts, these screws are actually resting on top of the speaker metal housing and I'll, I'll zoom it in. So as you can see, the bolts resting on top of the speaker. All right, so all these screws are tightened up. Everything is good to go. Everything is lining up. This is what I meant um, when I said you're gonna have to fabricate a little bit. Yeah, I drilled two small holes right here so that the screws can actually uh, get fastened where they're currently at with this with this speaker. I can't talk for any other speaker, but in reference to these Infinity speakers, this is all you really have to do. And the bottom portion, you could also use too uh, with the top portion as long as you just use those longer screws. I don't need any of that. Everything looks pretty good. It looks pretty clean the way it is right here. And so essentially it is time for reassembly. So let me go ahead and put this door panel back together and uh, call it a day. Guys, the speaker upgrade is awesome. Uh, I wanted to take it for a test drive and actually see it in action, or actually shall I say hear it in action. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I tuned the bass just a little bit in the treble. I wanna hear a little more dash speaker, so I turned up the treble. Um, but essentially turned up the, the bass and uh, the, the mid. And so you, you really gotta tweak it just a little bit to find that sweet spot. Uh, but once you, once you upgrade these dash speakers and these rear speakers, uh, you definitely hear a significant difference. Uh, due to the fact that, that junk I just took out, as you can see, I mean, it's pretty much cloth and uh, yeah, it just, it, it, it's not quality at all. I think we all can agree on uh, factory factory speakers. And I don't have the Alpine, so I mean, doing this upgrade is definitely worth it. I get a lot out of it, and so I'm pretty happy with the upgrade. Um, so go ahead, uh, if you haven't seen uh, my last video, I'll go ahead and post that up in the top right of the video. Uh, but if you have any questions or comments uh, pertaining to the speakers, or whether the uh, you know the the magic harness that I use, the plug and play. Uh, just you know shoot me a message uh, comment down below if you like this video go ahead and press like so until next time ciao Perfect.